Hello and welcome to this Hurricane Milton update. So you saw my, if you saw my short video, I, I was just so surprised. I, I, I can't believe that this thing's a Category 5 and it's still strengthening. This thing may be a Category... They may need to make a Category 6 eventually uh, because these hurricanes just keep getting stronger. You can see Milton there. Uh, a, a buzzsaw that looks like it's got its eyes on Florida. It's just going to brush... The Yucatan there, but you can see that very well-defined eye here on this satellite image of uh, Milton here. Um, let's go and look at the other satellite image of Milton, and then we're going to go to the latest from the Hurricane Center on Milton. So we're going to look at this, and you can see here again, just starting off, look at that buzzsaw. I mean, that's, that's just an incredible hurricane right there. Look at that almost perfect symmetrical eye, uh, and this thing continues to strengthen. It's... It's just unbelievable. It just became a cat. It, it turned into a Category 5 in 10 hours. Oh, not many hurricanes have done this. And this is going to be another historic hurricane uh, that we're looking at here. So let's look at the latest from uh, the Hurricane Center on Milton. Uh, latest public advisory on Hurricane Milton. Central pressure in the eye of Milton has fallen to a near record low. So this may be the deepest hurricane in recorded history. Milton poses an extremely serious threat to Florida, and residents are urged to follow the orders of local officials. And honestly, I think maybe now's the time to start evacuating uh, a good portion of Florida at this point. At 7 p.m., its location is 21.9 north, 90.4 west, about 60 miles northwest of Progreso, Mexico, and about 650 miles southwest of Tampa, Florida. Maximum sustained winds are 180 miles an hour. It's moving east at 10 miles an hour. The minimum central pressure, get this, 897 millibars. That's 26.49 inches. Most barometers don't even go that low. So looking at, and we already have hurricane warnings and watches already up. So uh, what we have here is a storm surge warning in effect, obviously the west coast of Florida. Hurricane warning in effect, Florida west coast from Bonita Beach northward to the north of the Sewanee River. That includes Tampa Bay. Storm surge watch in effect, hurricane watch is in effect for all these other areas, including the Florida west coast from Chocolosi to south of Bonita Beach. Florida east coast from St. Lucie, Indian River County line northward to the north mouth of the St. Mary's River. And tropical storm warning is in effect for all of the Florida Keys including Dry Tortugas and Lake Okeechobee, Florida west coast from Flamingo to south of Benito Beach, and Florida west coast from north of the mouth of the Swanee River to Indian Pass. And tropical storm, basically the whole of all of Florida is going to be affected by this. Uh, this is very, very bad. So at 7 p.m., the eye of Hurricane Milton was located near latitude 21.9 north, longitude 90.4 west. Milton is moving toward the east at 10 miles an hour. This general motion is expected through tonight, followed by a turn toward the east-northeast and northeast on Tuesday and Wednesday. On the forecast track, the center of Milton is forecast to move near or just north of the Yucatan Peninsula tonight and Tuesday, then cross over the eastern Gulf of Mexico and approach the west coast of the Florida Peninsula on Wednesday. Hurricane Hunter aircraft indicate the maximum staying winds remain near 180 miles an hour with higher gusts. Milton is a potentially catastrophic Category 5 hurricane on the Saffir-Simpson wind scale. With fluctuations in intensity are expected, Milton is forecast to remain an extremely dangerous hurricane through landfall in Florida. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 30 miles from the center, and the tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 80 miles from the center. Uh, a small storm in size, but it will grow uh, with time probably. Minimum central pressure estimated from Hurricane Hunter aircraft observations, 897 millibars. That's 26.49 inches. That is an incredibly deep storm. Uh, this is just unbelievable. And you can see here are some amounts. Tampa Bay, 10 to 15 foot storm surge, uh, which was much worse than Helene. All right, so... Tampa, the whole city should be evacuated. The whole city. In fact, I think everything, Tampa or that whole area should be evacuated. And I think time to leave. Hopefully people are starting to just get out because this is going to be catastrophic. Um, this, is, this, is, this could be the worst hurricane Florida has seen since Andrew. Perhaps even worse than that. All right. So, and this one, obviously, Andrew moved from east to west. This one's moving from west to east. Let's look at the at the warning cone here. 
And you can see here, there's the hurricane warning uh, in effect, uh, surrounded by tropical storm warnings. And again, the whole coast of Florida. Looks like the hardest hit part of Florida is going to be that central part of Florida. But I think the whole state's going to feel it. And also, we have hur this hurricane will also brush uh, the Yucatan and affect that area as well. Um, so uh, this is going to be a very, very catastrophic uh, hurricane. Rainfall potential. This is what we have again. On top of the salt water, you're going to have at least six inches of rain in a lot of Florida. All right. So this is going to be, again, a very, very devastating storm. Uh, and we're going to look at some observations from that, this storm as well. Uh, let's go back to tidbits. Again, take another look. Where is that loop? Here it is. Um, and you can see just how, look at that, how tight that thing is getting. That is unbelievable. And that is that is what you call a buzzsaw right there. That's a buzzsaw, and it's heading right for Tampa and, and the central part of the Florida Peninsula. Uh, so uh, let's go and look at some of the models, the modeling, obviously. So the models is, is pretty tight with the track here. So pretty, it's not a whole lot of disagreement here on this track. Uh, it's going to track right over Tampa, if not maybe a little bit south of it, all right? Um, but that it's that general area. Intensity guidance. So a lot of the models want to weaken it in two days, but that's when it's going to be making landfall, obviously. But some models don't, which is very disturbing. So, and it's not just, it's not just one, or one, one, or one model. It's about four of them. So that's also very disturbing to see uh, because the Florida Peninsula, again, Everybody thinks, oh, it's going to, when it hits the Florida Peninsula, it's just going to poof. No, Florida is a very wet place. It's low-lying. It's not a big peninsula. And honestly, I don't see this thing weakening a whole lot. Um, it'll, it'll be at least a Category 3, but I think, I, I think it's going to be more like a Category 4 and at the worst-case scenario. I would not be surprised if this is a Category 5 right through until it hits Florida. Um, so um, let's go and look at some of the models on this we'll talk a little bit about our weather after i get done with talking about milton but milton right now is the main thing that we have to talk about and the models way way off with the with the strength of this storm already so it's like way way off just way way off so let's look at uh not our our area let's go to the southeast sector here and again we're going to show you again what let me go back to the model page here conus and just show you what's going to happen in the upper air, all right? So there's that trough. And you see that trough will pick it up. But you can see it kind of stays separate. But you see how it gets picked up a little bit, moved toward the center part of Florida. Uh, and luckily for us, again, it, we, we don't deal with any effects at all. Uh, it's going to move directly just due east, all right? And, this is, and it kind of just dissipates it as it moves here. That might be a little too quick, all right? Let's see what the European is doing with this yeah I mean they look pretty similar the GFS and the Euro so let's go look at the surface and again models are just completely it's scary how the models just just don't have a handle on how strong this thing is um, and you can see the models deepen it and deepen it and deepen it even more the Euro is just deepening it all the way until it makes that landfall which would be again Wednesday night crossing the Florida Peninsula and then emerging out over there over you know. luckily it looks like it looks like it stays a fairly compact storm you'll also notice there's another storm that forms over here that uh, may be coming a, a named storm as well um, which is the European here and you can see that high pretty much staying over us and keeping us fair and beautiful weather for us uh, but really horrible for Florida uh, and I think after this, a lot of people from, who moved down to Florida are going to regret it, and they're going to come back to New York and put even more pressure on our housing market. Uh, but here's the GFS, same deal. GFS keeps it kind of strong, as you see. So definitely not a good situation at all. So let's take a closer look at the GFS. We'll start with this. Hertz. This is the GFS here, and you see again. I mean, that thing just gets deeper and deeper. and deeper. It doesn't really weaken very much. Um, and it looks like almost a direct hit on Tampa with the eye going over Tampa. Um, now, as far as if you're in the Miami area, it does keep the storm compact. So if the storm stays compact, Miami, 
um, up to Palm Beach, you'll probably be okay, but you're going to be dealing with some tropical storm conditions. Um, but as far as Tampa goes, it's going to be a real bad situation over there. Look at that thing. I mean, that's just... And then, see, it stays strong the whole way through, and then it moves away uh, out. All right, so this is the GFS, the truly a frightening storm. This is the precip rate. We can also change this to the radar. Let's do that. This is the radar presentation here. I mean, you can see not a whole lot of dry air gets involved in it. A little bit toward the end, but it's, it's got its own moisture there, and it's just really just... Look at how wound up that thing is. I mean, that's... This is... I, I can't believe I'm looking at this. This is going to be... This may be the worst hurricane to ever hit Florida at the point we're going. Honestly, I think this landfalls is a Category 5. I... I, I I, I don't think it's going to weaken very much. I think it's going to be at least a Category 4, if not a Category 5, uh, because it's got plenty of warm water to work with. Again, we looked at the sea surface temperatures. Uh, there's plenty of warm water there. Uh, the, there. Even though Helene removed some of the heat from there, there's so much there. It's just en enough to stay. And, it, you know, it, and it, it's been a little while since Helene's been through, so it's been able to recover already. Um, so um, we can look at the wind. And again, I'll just show you the 700 to 300 humidity just to show you that dry air is really not going to be a factor until it gets off the Florida coast. Um, so let's look at the wind, which is terrifying here. You can see the wind field is very tight. Um, and there's any blessing in that. It is a tight wind field. Uh, but that is a very intense wind field. So... Florida, uh, I mean, Tampa, Orlando, that area is going to get hit very hard. Miami will be spared, I think, anything really too bad. But Tampa, that whole part of Florida is going to be just wrecked, wrecked. Um, let's just say it this way. Um, this is going to put Tampa into the same situation New Orleans was in after Katrina, I'm telling you. So they better evacuate Tampa, the whole city. Uh, this is not... Any, oh, no, Orlando, too. Because this whole area is going to be just destroyed. All right? That's a lot of wind right there. All right? Um, this is the GFS. Let's go and look at the European model. European is even smaller with the, how small... It's really... The euro is really small with this thing. I don't know if I'm buying the euro being it, it being that small. Um, let's go look at the icon. Icon is 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 like a little bit of a icon's a little further south as well. She so kind of gets pushed a little bit further to the south, the center of it. But that track is going to be important because any little variation is going to basically make a big difference as to who gets hit the hardest um, with this storm. Uh, so let's look and see if we can get some short range models up here. Um, H triple R. Don't think it's going to go. Yeah, they're not going to go far enough out. We're going to have to we'll look at them tomorrow night. I think the shorter range. We don't really have enough in the shorter range, but truly a frightening, frightening situation. Um, and um, if I go back to the GFS here, and we, I don't know if this gives us the wave height. Yeah, it does. Okay, here. So here's the GFS. Take a look at this. That is truly terrifying. That's like all pink off the charts. 30-foot waves, I would not be surprised. 10 to 15-foot storm surge, maybe even higher than that. I think this is going to be record storm surge um, for this area. I'm just... This is going to be a terrible, terrible disaster that's going to be coming. Uh, I know the news is preoccupied with a bunch of other stuff. <clears throat> But uh, this uh, this is really going to be the big story this week, uh, more than anything, is this disaster that's going to be unfolding in Florida. Uh, truly, truly terrifying stuff. So let me just briefly touch on our weather today. Uh, we'll go into uh, into our weather. We'll just look at the weather map here. Again, you see all of Florida covered in all these warnings. Um, um, and then we have air quality alerts for... Uh, Wyoming, because they have wildfires there. We have excessive heat warnings in effect for the southwest. Uh, but for us, uh, we had a kind of a warm day today. It's cool, finally starting to cool off. 
63, but it did hit 75 today. And uh, earlier on, it felt actually a little bit humid and muggy this morning. If we go back to this morning, you'll see. we had a, Actually, we had a southwest wind. And, yeah, the dew points were in the mid-60s. No wonder why it felt humid. Uh, and they didn't really start dropping until the afternoon. Uh, so I was a little surprised at the higher humidity. The good news is there was a little bit of rain that occurred over parts of Long Island today. Not a whole lot. Um, and as I showed you before, Jersey, uh, they're... they're, they're they're going to have to, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some red flag warnings in effect. But you see temperatures right now, mid-60s, though, I do see some upper 50s in the Pine Barrens. Uh, and again, looking at the highs today, you can see mid-70s, even close to 80 in Jersey. Um, so very warm day today. Uh, precipitation, let's go and look at that, and we'll see how much rain. Only on Long Island, let's see, it's not a whole lot of rain out there. Some areas got just a little less than a quarter of an inch. There were some showers. It looks like actually the east end, uh, one of them got Greenport got almost a half an inch. There are a couple of heavier showers and thunderstorms. Look like one hit the North Fork, and there's a .28 over there at Montauk. So I'm kind of curious. I'm going to get some more rainfall readings here from Wonder Map, and uh, we're going to see how much rain uh, actually fell over there because maybe, maybe there are some areas that got a little more. Just .14, .12, not a whole lot. We'll take it, but not a whole lot of rain. And as you head further west, yeah, even less it looks like Fire Island actually picked up a decent amount. 0.26 over by uh, Cherry Grove there. 0.22 in Ocean Beach. That's that's what we call a decent amount, but at least it's something. Um, but uh, anyway, um, getting back to the um, conditions, you see all the warnings here, right? And if we, I don't know if we have any observations here from any buoys uh, being reported here. Um, in here, there's a buoy over here. That's reporting a wave height of 14 feet. And that's on the back side of the storm. And the storm's like over here. So the storm is already probably churning up the oceans already. Um, and it's only going to get worse here. It's only going to get worse. And we're going to look at some more. Some more of those models. And again, let's see surface temperature. 84. Yeah, it's pretty warm. <laughs> um, and so that's why I don't think it's going to weaken all that much. It's a little, not a whole lot of shear in the atmosphere either. So um, this is going to be a really bad situation. Of course, on the right-hand side of the storm, you do have tropical storm watches. So Miami, Palm Beach, you're going to have tropical storm conditions. Um, and then this part of Florida here, you can see the hurricane and the, uh, and the storm surge warnings as well. And the high surface advisories and all that stuff. Uh, so uh, let's go back to a satellite image here. And I will go to the... Conus satellite image. So we'll show you that. And there are a lot of fire. Oh, yeah, a lot of wildfires going on. Yeah, those satellites are a little messed up. We had some solar activity. That's the other thing I want to talk about. Last night, um, believe it or not, there was a very brief aurora. And uh, yeah, it actually came out in this camera here. It's eight, I was out. I didn't notice it. It was at 8 o'clock. But you see here, look at the red. Look at the red on the side there. So there's an aurora. That's an aurora borealis there. So there was some, a bit of a solar flare. Uh, a bit of one. It was one. They keep saying, that, look, look at all the smoke over here coming from this area here. Oh, this is not a good situation at all. So you can see all that wildfire smoke. And honestly, I saw some haze in the air myself today. It was quite hazy uh, throughout much of the day. The sky was hazy. I took some pictures of it. Um, you can see the haze. Um, and then tonight I was trying to catch the aurora, but no luck. <laughs> but... Uh, Here's Milton again. Um, here's Milton right here. And it's already raining in Florida. So that's already setting the stage for um, for the ground to already be saturated. Here's our trough in the east. Um, let's go and look at, uh, again, what's going on over here in the northern Rockies because uh, there's a lot of wildfires going on here. Um, I don't know what just happened here. Um There we go. Of course, this is not the... Um, you can take, we'll just pause this here. Just take a look at all these fires here going. I mean, it will lo load this loop up. Of course, things are being very slow. Um, you can see there are a lot of wildfires. North Dakota. Uh, we got uh, Wyoming. Uh, Idaho. Um, you can see and you can see how they're going to explode as the sun sets. Um, this thing will just get going here. Yeah, it's very slow. 
Um, but anyway, uh, here we go. So here's again all that. All, yeah, look at those fires flare up like that. Look at that. Because nobody's talking about that. Everybody's going to be talking about Milton. We have numerous disasters going on. And again, you can see, look at that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, th those fires are really, yeah. And you can see all the smoke too from them as well. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's another thing. But that's, that's, that's another thing. So we got all these wildfires going on here in the West. Still, here we are in October and I don't even remember seeing that. Uh, Idaho, Wyoming, that's a big one in there in Wyoming. Um, so and that smoke is definitely going to be uh, tr affecting parts of the country. I don't think it will be affecting us. But I want to show you our uh, satellite loop. Um, and we'll just show you ours. And again, the 72. Uh, so you can see this is the front that came through. And again, the showers and thunderstorms really blossomed as it moved to the east. Um, well, again, while we wait for that, I'll go to the radar rewind. And again, again this is the weather prediction center here map. Uh, but let's go to the radar uh, rewind here in Ventu Sky, which I'll need anyway. Um, we look at Melton again. Uh, but I just want to show you what happened earlier today. So you can see we actually had some pretty good showers and even some thunderstorms, actually. Uh, again, hit parts of the North Fork. I wish I wish it would have affected more of Long Island. Uh, but at least we got a little bit of rain out of it. Uh, but it was mostly, most of the uh, energy with this was over northern New England. So let's see if we got our satellite loop. So you can see here... There's your front coming through in the air. And you can see there was definitely some haze in the air today. Uh, definitely noticed it, though. The air quality seemed to improve as we got toward this evening. Uh, but anyway, enough about us. I'm not really going to get too much into our weather because it's. Uh, I went over that yesterday. We've got to talk more about Milton. So let's uh, do that. Let's go to the Ventu Sky here. And I'll go to the winds. And we're going to, again, take a look at how this is going to handle Milton so we can better visualize what's going to be happening with Milton here. Um, uh, over time. So this is Milton right here, and you can see the model yeah, is already way, way off on how strong this thing is. The models just don't even, I mean, it's like almost to the point why even look at the models, but we have to look at them uh, because uh, the models have it getting stronger still. Uh, so that's the frightening thing. So you can see uh, this is the Ventus. So this is using the um, HRRR, I guess, icon. Um, model here but you can see here this is uh this is what's going to be hitting and you can see it looks like it's heading right this one this is the icon so it's a little further to the south um let's see if we can change this model here model change let's change this to the gfs yeah this is better i don't think the icon is off uh so this is the gfs and again it's going to be stronger than than what this is saying obviously um you can see it actually gfs does seem to actually get it even stronger but you can see it looks like it has it going right toward Tampa here. Uh, yeah, right. Literally, the eye is going to go right over Tampa. Look at that. That's that's pretty crazy. Uh, so this would be absolutely devastating, this kind of setup here. Absolutely, absolutely devastating um, for this area. Uh, and then as we head into Thursday, you see it go right almost right over Orlando. And then come out the other end. It's going to be moving quickly, but not super quickly. So it'll have time to do plenty of damage in this area. And I expect a complete blackout in this area. I don't think... I'll be surprised if there's any power on. Uh, this is going to be a lot of wind for any power grids inside. I was actually looking at some of the power transmission lines in Tampa, believe it or not. It's not as resilient as far as the south. They actually have some wood H frames. Those are going to be goners. Uh, and a couple of those, those each, those H frames are going to be destroyed completely. I don't know why they still have anything wooden on the transmission side over there. Anything wooden on the transmission side is going to be obliterated by this hurricane. Um, so let's go and look at Windy, which is the other site we can use. And go here, and we'll just change this to the. Wind gusts, so we get an idea. And again, this, this, again, this is Milton. And again, you can see it really, and you can see how it gets it stronger. You see that area of white growing, so it, it could get even stronger than what it is right now, which is truly frightening. So this again is the European model, and you can see here's Tampa. Here's the core of that. Uh, here we go at 9 p.m. on Wednesday, uh, starting to get ready to hit Tampa here, and you can see 100 mile an hour winds, and then kind of just makes it weaken pretty quickly when it gets in. Um, but I don't see that happening so quickly. 
I don't see that happening so quickly at all. And you can see even when it comes out on the other side, it's got it back up to 92 again on the wind speed. So um, uh, it's hard to nitpick on these models with the wind speeds. But the main thing that I want to use this model for is, again, to show the storm surge uh, that we're going to be having. So let's go and look at that. Uh, this is the concern here. Look at the red here. I mean, the storm surge is it's just going to be incredible here. I mean, look at this. In this area, you've got 30-foot waves coming in. You're going to have a 15-foot storm surge just crashing in uh, to this area of Florida here. And it's going to be catastrophic uh, between that and the winds. And then the East Coast deals with it. Um, you got to remember the winds are going to be coming in from the east. So East Coast is going to be dealing with some uh, flooding too as well. Um, and it all depends on the size of the storm. We still have a lot of... There's still uncertainty. Uh... Even though we know the track, we know generally know how strong it's going to be, the size and how quickly it's going to weaken when it interacts with the land is still to be determined. But if we learned anything from Helene, we know that um, it may not weaken all that much. And I was saying that when Helene was coming, that I, I had a feeling it's just not going to weaken that much. It's really not. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a concern that, that I have here. Um, and so this is going to be a catastrophic storm for Florida. And uh, we're going to have more models to look at tomorrow night when we come back here and talk more about Hurricane Milton. Obviously, just a catastrophic situation. Um, catastrophic indeed. Um, and it's, it's going to be one of the worst hurricanes, if not the worst hurricane that Florida has ever faced. Uh, because if you know anything about Andrew, it hit an area called Homestead, it was a very compact storm, but it missed Miami. This thing is going to hit Tampa, which is a lot lot more populated. There's also a lot more people living in Florida now. So um, this whole area, Tampa, Ocala, Orlando, St. Cloud, Daytona Beach. I hope you're making plans to get out. Head north or head south. Better off just to head north, in my opinion. And I know the problem is Georgia is still um, reeling, but try to head over to maybe Tallahassee area. Um but try to head north because uh, this is going to be, this is not a storm you want to uh, ride out unless you're a, a real professional storm chaser. Um, this is not a place for anyone to be uh, when this thing makes landfall. It's going to be incredibly destructive, uh, the wind and the storm surge. Um, Tampa is a good chance Tampa may actually get wiped off the map uh, or close to it. So think about that, a whole city just completely between the storm surge and the wind. Uh, they're not ready for it. Uh, this is going to be uh, just a catastrophic disaster. It really will be. Uh, and uh, I hope people are aware of what's going on there uh, with that. And again, um, it's it's. let's just look at, uh, at uh, Milton one more time here on the uh, satellite here. Let's close a few, get a few more satellite images up of Milton for you. Um, Actually, we could do a Gulf. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do a Caribbean. Actually, there's a Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, that's fine. Use that one. Just to give you an idea of Milton here, and I'll run a nice long loop for you. And uh, you can take a look, and actually, we can run a nice long loop. Let's run, a, let's run it all the way 240, so you see how fast this thing grew. All right. Uh, it's really incredible. It's going to take a very long time to load, but um, this, this storm really just grew very, very fast and uh, really incredible. It's, it's going to take a very long time to load this all that satellite imagery. Uh, so while we're looking at that, um, let me look at a few more models. Uh, let me go back to the windy.com. Uh, I know we don't have all the models, but uh, let's look at the... That was the European we looked at, so let's go and look at the NAM. And again, I'll move this over to wind gusts. So you just get an idea. Of, this is the NAM, which again, these models are so far off on this. The NAM... Oh, this is the GFS. Let's go to the NAM. Yeah, that's... The NAM is pretty realistic. So the NAM we only got out to the uh, Wednesday afternoon, but... If you look at the NAM, yeah, you'll see you're going to have some pretty strong winds here. Um, and th again, it's over this already, so none of the models have a handle on this. Uh, so if they, if the models have it getting even stronger, we know we may be dealing with something that may be what I would call a Category Six, possibly. So um, 
winds may go over 200 miles an hour. This may be, this may be one of the, this will be, I think, one of the strongest hurricanes ever recorded uh, to hit the United States. Uh, so it may it actually, I think, it may even be worse than Andrew. So uh, that is something again to consider. So let's take a look at the loop here. We've got it loaded up, uh, and you get to see the development of Milton here. All right, we still haven't loaded everything up yet. All right, there is some missing data. Uh, but you can see, I just want to show you how this thing just intensifies here. It just blows up like that. I mean, it's incredible. You can see the eye getting a little fuzzy there. Maybe it isn't direct to the Yucatan. Maybe it'll lose a little bit of strength, but it also could just be intensifying further as well. Uh, again, tropical tidbits. Um, Milton becomes a Category 5 hurricane. You see their, their graphics. And again, this is Milton right here. Just what, look at this. Look at this buzzsaw. It's just unbelievable. So uh, that is heading for Florida, and I really hope and pray that people are just getting out of the way. Don't think you're going to be able to beat this. I don't care if you're in the middle of the city. Oh, you think it's fine if you're in the middle of Tampa. Just get the hell out because this is, gonna, this is a storm that's going to kill people. All right, um, This is a storm that's going to destroy structures, destroy the power grid, destroy all the infrastructure. This is not a storm you want to be around, uh, especially in the aftermath if we learned anything from Helene. So that's going to wrap things up tomorrow night. I'll be back with another update on this monster Category 5 historic Hurricane Milton.